Carl and Lou here from Games at Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBL.com for short. And it's track by track time as we're going to the debut album by Wolves in the Throne Room. Diadem of 12 Stars. Is that how you say it? I thought call it di yeah. Diadem. 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 Yeah, I'm guessing it's just, guess yeah. it just shape of them. D I A D E M. Not sure how you say it. But it's the debut studio record of the black metal black metal band Wolves in the Throne Room. Uh, this was an album that basically flew under the radar at the time, completely flew under the radar at the time, but it was something that caught the attention of a specific label who would end up signing the band and re-releasing this on vinyl, uh, which helped it gain some traction, yeah. eventually reissued in 2016 through the band's own imprint, Artemisia Records. Um, I wouldn't say I knew of this band around this time. No. Um, anything particularly... No, I don't. I don't know when yeah. I first became kind of aware of what was in the throne room. I think mine was. I think it was the twenty sixteen one. Right. Um, oh, the Serpents Isle them ones. I think right. that's why I got most kind of like aware of them. But I think yeah, bold move as well to two thousand and six as well. I don't know like the sort of scene at that time, but oh, I think it's four been... tracks. There's four tracks on this album, and I feel like I don't know. Some people be like, okay, four tracks. Uh, yeah, I mean, see what I mean? Like, to 2006, I can't see there was. I don't know. The, yeah, there wasn't position. much, maybe, potential music like this. Um, the epicness of it, epic sort of black metal. But yeah, it was just a definition of black metal. I, I I don't know, I have no comparative because in 2006, this wasn't music I was certainly no. listening to um, oh. at all. And even, even now, when I looked at it and was like, oh, it's four tracks, mm. oh, one of them's 20, 20 minutes. minutes. <laughs> okay, you know, I have an inkling of what I'm in for there, but you know, I'm like, okay, it's mm. going to hopefully go with something interesting. Yeah. You know, overall, I'd say I like this album. Mm. I, I don't know if necessarily I'd say I loved it in the mm. sense that I th think, like, can I ever, can I imagine me ever really going back and listening to this again and for? I'm not sure if that might be the case. No, whereas some of the later tracks, some of the more modern stuff. Maybe. Definitely. Yeah, is. yeah. This is a band as well that, like, I enjoy, mm. but I don't think I enjoy them in quite the same way you do. Mm. I've not seen them live, mm. so I don't know how that... I think it'd be obviously cool live, but... I've seen plenty of bands that do that stuff, Yeah, but, and then when you get, when you've got the comfort of listening to these songs when you're sitting down with your headphones on, mm. you're different to, like, standing around and... But, yeah, be interested to see, and I think at Damnation they've got, like, stage chimes changed to kind of accommodate their stage setup, so yeah. they might be bringing something special for that, so... Possibly, Intriguing. possibly. Yeah. You can see them at Damnation Festival this year. So yeah, we've got to approach this one a little bit differently. It's not the first mm. time we've had to approach this a little differently. Obviously, normally with track by tracks, we're talking through 8 to 12, maybe a few more tracks, uh, giving you a brief run over of them. When you've only got four tracks, this video could be, is going to be a matter of minutes long mm. if we follow that route. So it is an attempt to be a bit more detailed. Mm. And instead of the top three tracks in it it's simply one track because there's four basically so yeah. picking three you pick the majority of the freaking album mm. so we are going to get started and it is queen of the borrowed light uh so to use the word epic to describe this or really any track on the album kind of feels wrong simply because it doesn't convey often just how grand it is a track like this it's a bit of a journey uh, a black metal journey of holding savagery furious intensity and emotional layering from the moment the black metal erupts, you know this one is going to affect you emotionally, and it does. The rawness, though, can't quite hide the incredible detail that hi it hides amongst the instruments. It's a track that almost leaves you lost for words as it drags you kicking and screaming into the ether. Yet traditional black metal fans won't necessarily be put off either by this, as it's still got a very harsh sound, a harshness that sounds like a cold winter wind. sounds rough but I do like the female the backing vocals mm -hmm. in that as well yep. um, the sound really swelled and I love that I can instantly know it's walls in the throne room okay like the formation of it so the elements that I've had in the more modern stuff right you I don't hear ball. like the creation here and I'm like oh this is actually really really cool to hear um, I love when it kicks back, back in after the midsection it sounds amazing so just the whole the whole construction of it and like really setting themselves out and going right this is what we are um, and again you say you do get the black metal naysayers and stuff yeah, yeah, the elaborate, the, the elaborate nature of it would have mm. been incredibly off-putting. But that's kind of 
that's helped me find a new route into this kind of genre. Yeah, but I think I also think it would be, it, it's almost nonsensical because you know you're a black metal fan. This is a black metal album. Mm. Um, you know, if you're going to stop nitpicking and pulling apart and go, well, I don't like this specific part and this specific part. You can do that with any any band, any piece of music. You know, if you're like, okay, no, I only want my black metal to be three to four minutes of raw screaming, shouting, muddy instruments, yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Then maybe I kind of get it. But I think that's got elements of this. Oh yeah, I still yeah. think it, it does. Is, it's got raw. That roughness to it, it definitely yeah. is a rough sound. Whereas now, more like obviously, I just think it was on purpose yeah. rather than like, like oh no, we're just shit, we're just shit at playing music, yeah. so it sounds like crap. This was oh no, we want it to sound a bit. Not rubbish, that's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, just a bit dirty, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Face in a Nighttime Mirror Part 1. After such an intense opening track, it seems impossible to believe that this track could even come close to touching what we already got. The Wolves in the Throne Room were in a bit of a tear here, and it shows. The first part of a two-part track begins in a more horror-driven, traditional black metal way, mm. but the arrival of clean song and vocals makes, uh, marks a shift in tone. Drops in melody, eruptions of furious black and metal, pacing back and forth and intense, regardless of what elements the band wishes to showcase. This is easily one of the more exhaustive tri trials the band and the album puts you through. Hmm. I, like, I like a nice bleak intro to it. Mm -hmm. and then straight in with the furious drums. So again, like the layers of it. Uh, the female vocals lead nice into one of the many layers of this track. Yeah. So again, that's what I always appreciate. It's not just one note. Um, they really build on the layers of the track. Yeah, yeah. I'm always a little bit on the fence about that kind of thinking these days as well. Where I'm like, oh, yeah, this 10-minute track's great because you go up and down mm. and you go through some different areas. Because then you're kind of like, if it sounds nothing, at halfway or like the second half of, a, say, a 10-minute track, mm. if that second half sounds nothing like the first and never really goes back towards that, why is it Why is it one track? Yeah. Why is it not two tracks? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Like that. Uh, but I, I, I think Wolves and the Throne would do a pretty decent job of avoiding that for the most part. Yeah, you want it to be I wanted to flow. part of the same story. Yeah, I want it to flow. I want to feel like, oh, okay, that part there, I recognise that in, at minute eight is a repeat of what you did in minute two. Yeah. Because it flowed from that naturally to yeah. it. If it sounds completely different by the end to what it did at the start, but a problem with that as long as we kind of took a journey bit by bit on that, like, you know, a step-by-step -step yeah. kind of process... But like I said, when you've almost got two, uh, uh, like a split, you're almost like, you, you just put two tracks and put together. Why? Yeah. But like, I'm not saying that's what this is. No. Um, at all. I'm saying that that's more my issue when I see tracks. Like I think this is a, a very well-flowing track. Yeah. Uh, Faces in a Nighttime Mirror Part 2. Yeah. Of course. And the second part keeps the funny of noise intense from the start. The sense of choking darkness all the more prevalent and the warping of black metal traditions even more believable. When the frenzy does break briefly, it takes a doomy form and the vocals become even more devastating. The back and forth of Furious Intent is incredible. Later, the introduction of post-like guitar rhythm helps make the noise more palatable, but it can't be understated just how bloody powerful this track is. However, it does slightly lose my interest in the last couple of minutes as the rhythm is really jarring mm. and repetitive. Mm. That's yeah, my... But... That's This is my not okay ending one yeah mm. you say after the first part you want it to kind of have some sort of good conclusion to that part yep yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, i've got another solid blast of black metal i haven't got the same voc <laughs> oh, what's the word um vocabulary when i'm describing this music fair enough um very sludgy vocals i like it when it picks up the higher screams i do like that shifting yeah, yeah. shifting the voices in it so I, re I really enjoyed it but like you said yeah as a two-parter it enders strongly as I would have I didn't advised. really I didn't really mm. follow along with the two parts yeah. um, you know I'm not understanding the lyrics I'm not hearing and I'm not mm. reading them as I'm doing this that kind of thing so I don't know if there's that part or parcel of it musically you know it, it's two part kind of thing so it's kind of like oh no we separated this for whatever reason it's just that last like, I found that rhythm really really repetitive and quite jarring at the end mm. and I think maybe I kind of was off put because like I said with the introduction of like a post -guard, post like guitar rhythm mm. that's something I like so like ooh and then he kind of dropped it. I'm like, ah, yeah. ah, that ah. kind of thing. Also, don't worry about the vocabulary thing. Bear mm. in mind, my vocabulary mm. comes from the fact that I write so many music reviews that there's only so many ways I can write certain words. Yeah. So I studied a, th <laughs> a thesaurus. Yeah. And that's become my go-to thing these days. I find yeah. the variations on, you know, how yeah. many times can I say 
heavy. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You're always looking for ways around it. That's all it is. Yeah. Yay to thesaurus. I just put, it sounds crunchy. Groovy rhythm. Um, but yeah, overall, not as strong as I would like. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's not a bad song. It's just mm. I think it's you know maybe because of that ending, it's just notably not as good as what I've heard mm. elsewhere. And finally, finally already, a shimmering radiance diadem of twelve stars. This is the last track, and it's over twenty minutes long. Uh, and I can I get it why that's incredibly off putting mm. uh, for most people. I, I it, it was off putting to me. Yeah. Because I'm the all I'm thinking is like that's it. I know it's not. It's gonna sh- shift in shape beyond recognition mm. by minute 12 will i even have a remember what the hell happened in minute one or two yeah will i recognize it will i understand it or will it just be like nope this is just you making me you see what i mean like yeah. that element So based off of the previous three efforts, there's kind of there's no doubt this has got to be one hell of a journey. It's 20 minutes off the roll, mm. which of course it totally is. It's a beautiful blend of darkness and heaviness. The blackened tone is akin to hands gripping and dragging you deep into a hellish mire. It's mind numbing to some degree. I did admittedly start to feel a bit beaten down yeah. by it, especially because there's no separation of melody and metal. Um, sorry, the separation of melody and metal is so prominent here. Though there's no disliking how the band balance and transition between the two. Mm. I think it's done pretty well. It is an epic. There's just simply no better word sometimes to describe it. Though again, coming back to what I said at the very start of this track by track, using that word uh, is too simple to describe anything that appears in this song on the, al- on the album overall, I think. Mm. Just the word epic, you're like, okay, it sums up an imagery in your head, but does it properly convey kind of like, look, it is, but like not epic in that whole power metal kind of way it's more like no it's like here's a harsh land it's winds blowing it's cutting straight through whatever crap clothes you're wearing your rags so you're feeling in your bone you haven't slept in days you've got your tired legs but you know you've got to get across this land or you'll Mm. die like that kind of like sense yeah Yeah. um very mellow and dreamy start which I've really, really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Give way to heavier blast. The growls have lost my potency, which was good. Which you want, you want to keep that at the end. Um, I take a twenty-minute epic that feels at times quite slow and almost a chore to get through. It, yeah, okay, that's um, fair. I get it has got to end, end the album, but I did find myself looking at the time, and that's mm. a sign for me that I'm like, oh, I want something. I want to shift to something new now. Yeah, I want a new section. I want a new chapter of this twenty minutes, and I didn't really get that, so I felt like, oh, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, just a not great way to end it for me. Yeah, it's an interesting debut album. I would have loved to go back with, like, uh, less knowledge of this sort of music mm. because I'd say I've listened to a lot of music like this yeah. before coming back to this album. Less knowledge. I probably would have been in- wowed by this yeah. when it first came out. Now, like I said at the start, I think it's a good album. I think it's mm. very enjoyable, but I think they've done better stuff elsewhere i think it's an it's a it's an it's an it's an eye-catching ear-catching uh debut um in that regards mm, the evolution has been really good because I mean, yeah evolution is an important word for them yeah mm, like, ooh, they've kind of honed it and yeah learnt yeah learnt that sometimes a 20 plus minute track mm. isn't what you need yeah and if you, you know? want to build up a harsh wilderness kind of feel they bring different kind of instruments and different kind of soundscapes and stuff and that brings it across a bit, a bit more in, even a bit more interesting way yeah, because I think mm. it's well worth stating again, this is at its heart a black metal album yeah. and it has that harshness. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there is no top three because that would be all the tracks of the freaking album pretty much. So simply, it's just one. Mm. Just choose one. What one would you recommend? Queen of the Borrowed Light. Okay. The first song. Yeah, I mean, that's the one I kind of lean towards, but I also think, well, I'll go the opposite then. Mm-hmm. Um, not the opposite, but the other one then I was thinking about. I'll go with Face in the Nighttime Era Part 1. Mm-hmm. Um, weird enough, yeah, I suppose there's a strong point as well. Those are the first two tracks. Mm. And we both praised those heavily. Yeah. But we were a little more critical of the, t- the, the latter two. Yeah. Interesting. And I wonder if that is because by that point we were 20 plus minutes into it. Yeah. 
and you're I, facing another 30 odd minutes of the, yeah, yeah of yeah. what you know is going to be very very similar music yeah because 20 minutes is really a lot different 20 minutes is a lot more different to say like an eight minute track of course of course of course it's stating the obvious but you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it is the first time Wolves in the Throne have appeared in this track by track mm. list, so not a bad way to start. It is Diadem of 12 Stars, the debut album. You got any thoughts on it? You know what to do? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw, consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music, and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. Games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?